Okay, we'll start our class. Okay, remaining students they will join. Ma. So okay. uh, yesterday we discussed about uh, potable water, uh, its specifications. Okay, and we have to discuss about uh, the steps. Uh, what are the steps are there in treatment of potable water? So what is potable water means? Water free from contaminants or water that is safe for human consumption. Okay, that is known as potable water. If if they will ask you what is potable water definition, so you have to write that is uh, water free from contaminants or water that is safe for human consumption is called a potable water. So some of the specifications I have given ma, this you have to write. Okay, specifications of potable water. The water should be clear, colorless, and odorless. The turbidity should not exceed ten ppm. Turbidity means uh, like a clay or mud particles. So the turbidity should not exceed 10 ppm. The hardness of water must be 125 ppm, not more than 125 ppm. Okay. And the pH must be 7.0 to 8.5, not more alkaline or more acidic. The water should be free from heavy metals uh, like lead, arsenic, chromium, manganese, and dissolved gases uh, such as H2S and CO2. Okay. The water should be free from pathogenic microorganisms. So these are the specifications of potable water. So next, uh, treatment of water for domestic purpose. So municipalities have to supply potable water or drinking water. So the treatment of water for drinking purpose mainly includes okay, removal of suspended impurities, colloidal impurities, and harmful pathogenic bacteria. Okay, so these three we have to remove. Okay, suspended impurities, like uh, you can tell, uh, we can take clay particles like, okay, colloidal impurities and harmful pathogenic bacteria. Colloidal impurities means like a very fine particles will be there in the water. Okay, any uh, like a solid particles only, but it is very fine particles, colloidal impurities and harmful pathogenic bacteria. So there are five steps are there students, five steps are there. First step is screening, okay? Second step, sedimentation. And third step is coagulation. Fourth step, filtration. And uh, fifth step is disinfectation. Five steps are there in treatment of portable water. Five steps are there. First step, screening. Second step, st sedimentation. Third step, coagulation. Fourth step, filtration. Fifth step, sterilization or disinfectation okay so first we will collect the sources uh, we will collect the water from uh, different sources okay then we go for first step so first step is screening so screening is water is allowed to pass just we will uh, pass the water through the large mesh screens so where we can remove the large floating matters like uh, leaves bark of the wood Okay, if any floating matter is there in water, we can remove by passing through the large mesh screens. Next is sedimentation. Water is allowed to stand undisturbed for two to five hours uh, in big setting tank. You can see here, okay, we have taken one big tank here, filled water here, okay, in the tank. And we should not disturb, okay, for two to five hours or more than five hours, so that all the suspended particles all the suspended particles means impurities that will settle down, that will settle down due to gravitational force, due to gravity and clear water rises. Okay, the clear water rises. So that can be drawn out, which can be drawn out with the help of the pumps. Okay, that is the sedimentation process. Sedimentation process also simple. We are taking a water in large tank and we won't disturb for two to five hours then all the impurities that will settle down at the bottom of the tank and the clear water we will uh, take out with the help of the pumps. So next is the third step. So third step is coagulation. Students, you are listening to me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Third step, listen. Okay, no? So coagulation. Yes, okay. So colloidal particles, for example, very fine clay particles are there. Colloidal particle, we cannot, uh, so that will be very small size particle will be there, okay. Uh, we cannot see also colloidal particles which are present in water, for example, 
clay particles clay particles are negatively charged particles negatively charged particles okay so colloidal particles which are present in water okay that are removed that are removed colloidal particles we are removing ma listen students colloidal particles which are present in water are removed by adding coagulants by adding coagulants like aluminum sulfate sodium aluminate sodium aluminate okay ma i gave two coagulants here one is aluminum sulfate and second one is sodium aluminate okay these two coagulants these two chemicals we are adding in the water see the diagram now okay ma we have we have taken water in the tank okay so we are adding coagulants in the water okay what happens when we are adding coagulants means okay you can see here when we are adding aluminum sulfate in the water in the water okay so aluminum hydroxide flocks are formed aluminum hydroxide flock that is like a precipitate only aluminum hydroxide flock okay so which produces flocks okay so this uh, uh, flocks um, it will trap the impurities it will attract the impurities okay so this is aluminum aluminum means that is positively charged okay aluminum is positively charged ma it will attract see the students al3 plus so this aluminum flock um, it will trap the impurities okay so uh, what are the impurities are there in the water for example clay particles clay particles are negatively charged okay so this aluminum flock it will trap the impurities it will trap the negatively charged clay particle clay particles and it will convert into a, a bigger particle means uh, uh, that is uh, uh, forming like a bigger particle uh, then that will be settled down you can see more. this flocks green color that is trapping the uh, you can see pink color for example negatively charged particles it will trap this impurities and it will so slowly settle down at the bottom of the tank you can see the impurities here students are listening to me in the water impurities are there ma for example clay particles all these pink dots are impurities pink dots are impurities for example negatively charged clay particles so we are adding coagulants we are adding coagulants when we are adding coagulants then here flocks will be formed ma like a precipitates only flocks will be formed in the water okay like a green color one okay aluminum flocks this will trap the impurities this will attract the impurities okay like a neutralization ma understood students okay neutralization of the particle will be taking place here so this will be converting like a bigger particle only okay that will be settling settling down at the bottom of the tank so coagulant forms a precipitate okay trapping impurities okay it will trap the impurities it will attract the impurities and it will be settling down at the bottom of the tank you can see here at the bottom of the tank students precipitate and trapped impurities that will settle down to bottom that will be settling down to the bottom of the tank so you can see here okay ma so negatively charged particle with the cloud of counter ion negatively charged particle with the cloud of counter ion so add strongly adsorbing species of opposite charge means we are taking aluminum flux here that is positively charged so that will be neutralized with the opposite charge negatively charged clay particles so neutralized particle with the no double layer you can see here so this is the process of coagulation okay which produces flux here aluminum flux for example here okay and uh, adding sodium aluminate also you can see aluminum hydroxide flux is formed so smaller particles gathered together so that will convert into a bigger flux means this flux will attract the negatively charged particles from the water and converting into a bigger flux and that can be easily removed by filtration so after after settling down we go for filtration we go for filtration so this is one more diagram okay impurities you can see we are adding coagulants and uh, here that will be trapping the impurities and settling down at the bottom of the tank so this is about coagulation students so to remove the colloidal impurities colloidal particles so we are going to add coagulants we are we are going to add coagulants like aluminum sulfate sodium aluminate sodium aluminate okay converting into a 
like a uh, it will form like a phloxma aluminum hydroxide flux so this flux will uh, trap the impurities this will attract the negatively charged particles and neutralization takes place that will settle down at the bottom of the tank and we go for filtration after that we can remove it by filtering that water so next is filtration filtration also important fourth step is filtration and third step is coagulation students what is coagulation why we are using coagulants ma coagulation to is remove the particles. small particle into bigger particles what is coagulant means why we have to use coagulants here to remove the to make the particles bigger and to settle down to rem to remove the very fine particles in the water colloidal particles so that colloidal particles are charged particles students colloidal particles are it will be charged it will be charged charged particles now what you are doing to remove that charged particles adding coagulants adding coagulants adding coagulants what are the coagulants we are using what are the chemicals we are adding in to so forth right what are the two chemicals i gave you here and aluminum sulfate aluminum sulfate sodium aluminate two chemicals we are taking ma aluminum sulfate sodium aluminate okay so both no need to add you can add aluminum sulfate yes. sir no yes, yes ma yes, so you are adding aluminum sulfate in the water you are adding aluminum sulfate in the water what is aluminum sulfate here it is a coagulant coagulant it is a coagulant okay after adding aluminum sulfate what is formed in the water flux precipitate flux aluminum hydroxide and calcium what is formed in the in the water tell me aluminum what is formed in the water flux aluminum hydroxide flux what is formed in the water aluminum hydroxide aluminum hydroxide flux what that will do now aluminum hydroxide flux it will attract it will attract smaller particles it will attract smaller particles which are oppositely charged understood ma understood Mm. aluminum hydroxide flux these are positively charged that will attract the negatively charged particles which are present in the water and converting into a bigger flux converting into a bigger flux okay like a bigger precipitate so that will settle down at the bottom of the tank due to gravitational force then after that we go for filtration understood ma nothing but we are going like for neutralization only neutralization means what ma what is mean by neutralization positively charged particles are attracted negatively charged particles, particles. okay ma understood everybody how to remove negatively charged particles from the water tell me now using coagulants like air uh, aluminum Al two SO four three and NaLO two, which produces flux, and that will attract other bigger flux. Bigger flux, sir. I mean, other uh, smaller particles to form. Smaller bigger. particles, it will attract. It will attract the other particles, uh, okay, present in the water, but oppositely charged particles, it will attract. So clay particles, for example, these are negatively charged particles. So it will attract negatively charged particles and settle down at the bottom of the tank. understood ma what you can see here you, you can see aluminum it is positively charged okay flock it will attract negatively charged clay particles and settle down at the bottom of the at the bottom of the tank you can see the ma diagram students you can see the diagram coagulant forms precipitate okay and trapping impurities means by trapping impurity will trap the impurity first it will form a precipitate flux ma flux is nothing but a precipitate so it will attract the impurities and it will settle down at the bottom of the tank okay what color you can observe ma in the tank here first first what you can see in the tank pink color is what ma dots 
clay particles clay particles okay second what you are doing you, you have added coagulant that green color one is what flux flux so that is attracting what smaller particles mm. it is it is forming like a clumps yes sir no converting into a bigger part bigger uh, like a uh, flux yes sir no now slowly what is happening here see the diagram after converting into a bigger flux what is happening here in this step they all settle down settle down at the bottom of the tank okay ma so to remove the to remove the colloidal particles okay so we have to add coagulants compulsory then you can remove fine particles understood everybody students you are following me yes ma'am are you yes, ma you understood everybody yes ma'am to remove the yes, fine particles which are charged particles to remove that particles we are using coagulants so that will convert into flocks in the water that will trap the impurities that will trap the smaller particles and converting into a bigger flocks and that will easily settle down at the bottom of the tank then we go for filtration okay by filtering that we will uh, take the filtered water and uh, uh what precipitated uh, precipitate which is settling down that we will remove it understood okay ma so what is the first step students screening screening uh, screening why we have to do why we have to do screening to remove, to remove larger particle remove larger particle what are the larger particle what are the larger particles logs wood logs or paper or something or anything okay ma leaves papers or bark of wood okay sedimentation why we have to do sedimentation second step is compulsory Instant particles so to re ah uh, ma to remove the to remove the suspended particles present in the water so we have to uh, uh, we have to take in tank water so that uh, all the particle it will settle down at the bottom of the tank and clear water we get so that we will uh, pass we will take, we will run out with the help of the pump then we go for third step third step is compulsory it is very very each step is important so third step is you can understand clearly here to remove the colloidal particles to remove the very fine particles colloidal particles we are using coagulants so that here it will form flocks in the water that will attract the impurities and settle down at the bottom of the tank after settling down then you can uh, you can go for uh, fourth step so fourth step is simple ma see filtration filtration also it is important here what we do in filtration is we we, we use the sand bed you can see in the diagram students three layers are there ma sand bed three layers are there okay bottom layer is gravel layer okay large stones will give uh, next uh, this layer on the top of the gravel layer we will take a sand bed we will take a sand bed okay like a coarse layer not completely uh, fine sand following me not completely fine sand like a coarse uh, layer okay na on the top of that we will take very fine sand very fine sand we will take three layers will be there ma in a sand filter okay so colloidal matter if anything is not removed okay from third step we can remove here okay colloidal matter uh, bacteria any bacteria microorganisms so that are removed here uh, by taking filtration by using a sand filter bed so water is passed through large area sand bed large area sand bed we will pass the water see here ma, raw water in from this side okay so we will pass the water on the uh, large uh, sand bed so the uh, here uh, we can remove uh, bacteria microorganisms or any colloidal matter by going uh, this process the fourth step filtration so the filter may be uh, pressure filter we can use or uh, we can use uh, gravity filter you can use okay there are two types of filters will be there ma pressure filter or gravity filter and we can remove any colloidal matter is there bacteria is there microorganism we can remove by going uh, this step fourth step 
filtration mark. So after third step, we go for filtration. Now fifth step is fifth step is disinfection or disinfectation. We we, we can uh, we can call it like a disinfection uh, disinfectation. So I wrote here disinfection. Okay, ma. So what is uh, disinfection? What is disinfection means? So disinfection is the process of destroying the process of destroying okay or killing the disease producing bacteria or microorganisms etc from the water and make it safe and make it safe are called disinfection okay so the process which we are following the process to kill the bacteria to remove the bacteria okay and making it safe are called disinfection okay so the chemicals used for this process the chemicals used for killing bacteria are called disinfectants now chlorine is disinfectant chlorine is disinfectant ozone is disinfectant okay so disinfectant means the chemicals used the chemicals used for killing bacteria are called disinfectants disinfection means the process of destroying bacteria from the water the process of destroying the bacteria or killing the bacteria from the water is known as disinfection and what is disinfectant means the chemicals used the which are the chemicals we are using to kill the bacteria are called disinfectants so water can be sterilized by the following methods ma one is boiling so second is chlorination third is uh, disinfection by ozone okay boiling the water chlorination disinfection by ozone so in chlorination we will discuss here uh, by adding bleaching powder by using chloramines by chlorination okay so we can use bleaching powder we can use chloramines we can use directly chlorine to kill the bacteria so that is chlorination okay we will boil the water also at home we will do this only first one boiling the water okay so these two we will do in uh municipality uh, municipality means so uh, uh municipality plant what what they follow the uh, here treatment means chlorination and ozonization so first is boiling more water is boiled for at least 10 to 15 minutes so most of the pathogenic bacteria are killed but uh, uh, for example you take hyderabad so we have to send the water to uh, here uh, many families yes or no so this process is uh, not suitable only for family we can do yes or no yes ma so boiling the water for 10 to 15 minutes drinking that water we won't get any problems but uh, we won't do that at home everybody is drinking uh, what water we are drinking now aqua water what water we are drinking ma at home aro water em water gaavutunnara ma aro water aro water uv aro sterilized water aro uv पवर सो दे so we give for them boiled water okay so if this is very good method ma boiling the water very good habit also okay after going from the college you will drink boiled water warm water any students no ma'am the habit yes your father or mother they won't drink uh, warm water no ah huh? ha <laughs> ah, then you will tell your mother and father to drink warm water okay na it is good yes or no yes, what is killed ma if you are boiling the water bacteria bacteria is killed bacteria is killed when you when we are boiling the water so we have ma to drink ma'am my ma water filter does that ma'am same thing killing same, bacteria same thing ah but we get this habit also what is there sometimes we we will drink like this also no problem na no? yes or yes. no okay next one chlorination ma the process of utilizing chlorine the process of utilizing chlorine as a powerful disinfectant 
nobody should leave the class this is very very important class i told you okay the process of utilizing chlorine as a powerful disinfectant is called chlorination what is chlorination ma students what is disinfectant tell me what is disinfectant in a form of back pathogenic uh... tell me what is disinfectant means what The chemicals, the, the chemical which is used to to kill the bacteria. The chemicals used to kill the bacteria in water that is known as disinfectant. So, what is a uh, what is chlorination? Now, tell me the process of utilizing chlorine. The process of utilizing chlorine as a powerful disinfectant. As a powerful disinfectant. What is disinfectant? I told you already. What is disinfectant? The chemical used for killing bacteria. The chemical which is used for killing bacteria are called disinfectant. Now, what is chlorination? The process of utilizing chlorine as a powerful disinfectant is called chlorination. Understood, ma? What is chlorination? Tell me. The process. the process of utilizing chlorine as a powerful disinfectant is called chlorination okay ma so in that we are going to discuss three points ma by adding bleaching powder by adding chloramines by adding chlorine now by adding bleaching powder bleaching powder so that is called here uh, chemical name uh, calcium oxychloride calcium oxychloride so we are adding bleaching powder in water okay in water h2 in water we are adding so what we are getting in water is calcium hydroxide and chlorine calcium hydroxide and chlorine so this chlorine see ma this chlorine so in presence of water only in presence of water so what we are getting in the water hypochlorous acid ma hocl hypochlorous acid which is a very powerful very powerful uh, disinfectant very powerful disinfectant so this hypochlorous acid it will kill the germs it will kill the bacteria present in water so when we are adding bleaching powder okay so what we are getting in the water is chlorine so that chlorine in presence of water only okay it forms okay what we get is hypochlorous acid and hcl so this hypochlorous acid is a powerful disinfectant it will kill the bacteria present in water okay so but some disadvantages are there by using bleaching powder so bleaching powder introduces calcium calcium in water bleaching powder introduces ca2 plus ions in the water okay calcium hardness in water and add lime residue that is calcium hydroxide nothing but uh, that water it becomes uh, more hard water is or no it contains more hardness yes or no that is the disadvantage ma using bleaching powder okay so excess of uh, excess of it means if you are adding more bleaching powder okay for example you are taking 200 liter of water okay you should not use like um, uh, 5 kg of bleaching powder you have, maybe you have to add only 1 kg of bleaching powder if you are using excess of it we get very bad smell and bad taste bad smell and bad taste so excess chlorine excess chlorine is irritating to mucous membrane excess chlorine it is irritating to mucous membrane these are the disadvantages ma so first of all increasing the hardness in water okay when we use the bleaching powder so next is uh, so everybody understood ma what we are what we are using ma in chlorination first what we are using which chemical bleaching powder bleaching powder calcium oxychloride we are adding in water but we are getting in water calcium hydroxide and chlorine and chlorine in presence of water only we get hypochlorous acid this hypochlorous acid it will kill the bacteria but one disadvantage is increasing the hardness in water okay so uh, better we should not use bleaching powder yes sir no yes sir no because disadvantages are there following students yes ma'am we have to use bleaching powder or not tell me not use we should not use bleaching powder okay because increasing the hardness in water is yes or no 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So next is uh, uh, we use chloramines, ma. Okay, we'll prepare. Okay, we will take chlorine and ammonia. Two chemicals, ma. See here, chlorine and ammonia in two is to one ratio. We will take and we'll prepare here chloramines. Okay, and we will uh, uh, add in water. You see here, we are preparing chloramines in H two Cl. NH3, ammonia we are taking, chlorine we are taking, and we are, prepare, we are preparing chloramines, okay, and H2Cl, so that we are adding in water, that we are adding in water, then you will get here in water, ammonia and hypochlorous acid. So this hypochlorous acid is powerful disinfectant. It is a powerful disinfectant, it will kill the bacteria, okay? So it has better bactericidal action than chlorine, means uh, when we are adding chlor chloramines, huh? It will kill the bacteria. Will kill the bacteria. It has better bacteri bactericidal action than chlorine. Okay, so uh, chloramine it is a uh, like a powerful disinfectant. Okay, so we can use this chemical. It is more stable. So mostly students, these chloramines, uh, they will uh, take as a disinfectant in swimming pools. Ma. In swimming pools, they will use chloramines only, not chlorine or bleaching powder. They will add chloramines only in swimming pools. Okay, na? So same uh, theory part I gave here. Okay, na? So hypochlorous acid, it, uh, it is a powerful disinfectant that kills the bacteria. So this hypochlorous acid, it will inactivate inactivates the enzymes of bacteria. It will inactivate the enzymes of bacteria and kills the bacteria, okay? So this is most more stable and not producing any irritating order. So we will use in swimming pools, okay? So this is the second one students by using chloramines and you know how we are preparing chloramines. We will take ammonia and chlorine, okay now? We will take Ammonia and chlorine. Chlorine and ammonia in 2 is to 1 ratio and will prepare the NH2Cl chloramines that we are adding in water. We will get HOCl, hypochlorous acid. So that will kill the bacteria present in water. Okay. So where we use this means in swimming pools. Now, third one. In chlorination, first bleaching powder. Second one is uh, chloramines we are using. Third one is directly chlorine we are adding. Directly chlorine we are adding in the tank. Okay, directly chlorine we are adding in the tank. So the quantity of chlorine, the quantity of chlorine to be added is important. Okay, if you add more amount of chlorine, you will get bad smell, bad order. So how much quantity of chlorine we have to add, we have to see that. Ma. Okay, the quantity of chlorine to be added is important here. So the disinfection will not complete if chlorine is insufficient. For example, for 200 liters of water, we need, we have to add one kg of chlorine. For example, I am telling, okay? But we are not adding one kg. We are taking, uh, okay, less than one kg. So we cannot uh, remove all bacteria present in water. Yes or no? Okay. So the disinfection will not complete if chlorine is insufficient. If chlorine is insufficient or if excess chlorine is added more than one kg if excess chlorine is added it it causes irritation it causes irritation bad taste bad order bad taste bad order you can't drink that water also yes or no we can't drink that water we are getting bad taste bad order okay bad smell we are getting so what we are what we have to do here when we are adding chlorine directly in water we should see that exact amount, okay, exact how much amount, how much quantity of chlorine we have to add, we have to see and we have to add so that we won't get any problem. If we add exact amount of chlorine, then we can kill all the bacteria present in water. So the process of, the process of applying calculated amount of chlorine to water, the process of applying calculated amount of chlorine to water in order to kill the pathogenic bacteria is called chlorination. The process of applying calculated amount of chlorine to water in order to kill the bacteria is called chlorination. 
So we are adding chlorine in water, ma. Okay, to kill the bacteria. Now, chlorine we are adding in water. See, ma. Cl two plus H two O. Chlorine we are adding in water. So what we get in water? Hypochlorous acid. Hypochlorous acid. So that hypochlorous acid it will kill the bacteria. In three steps, the same. First step is we are taking a, a bleaching powder. Bleaching powder. They are also forming hypochlorous acid only. Because chlorine only we are getting. Yes or no? In presence of water, we are getting hypochlorous acid and killing the bacteria. Second step also, we are getting hypochlorous acid only. That is killing the bacteria by using chloramines. Third step also, we are adding directly chlorine. So there we are getting hypochlorous acid. Adding directly chlorine to water forms hypochlorous acid in water that will kill the bacteria present in water. So chlorine is a powerful disinfectant, okay, than chloramine and bleaching powder, okay. So by using chlorine also, it will kill the bacteria. But previously, what I gave here in theory part, it has a better bactericidal action than than chlorine. Better bactericidal action than chlorine, chloramines. So that only will keep. We will remove this one. Okay, na? No need writing like this. There's no need. We can write better than bleaching powder. That only will keep here. Okay. Powerful uh, disinfectant than bleaching powder. Okay. Clear, students? Okay, na? Okay. So, calculated amount of chlorine must be added to water because chlorine after reacts with bacteria. Okay. And organic impurities present in water or ammonia present in water remains in water, remains in water as a residual chlorine, which gives bad taste, bad odor, and it is toxic to human beings. I'm repeating again, slowly you listen, ma. Calculated amount of chlorine must be added, exact amount of chlorine must be added in water because chlorine reacts with Bacteria means it will kill the bacteria present in water. All the bacteria present in water, it will kill. And organic impurities or ammonia, it means it will react with the organic impurities or ammonia present in water. After reacting with the impurities present in water, after completely destroying bacteria, the excess of chlorine, the excess of chlorine, for example, uh, there. Uh, Two grams of chlorine is remaining in water after killing all bacteria, after remove, after uh, reacting with all impurities. There is a two grams of chlorine is there in water, excess chlorine. That chlorine is called what, ma? Students, that chlorine is called what? Residual chlorine. Ma, taking 10 grams of chlorine, ma, in water. 10 grams of chlorine. Listening to me, 10 grams of chlorine I have taken. So it reacted after that, uh, it reacted with, uh, after forming a hypochlorous acid, it reacted with all uh, 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 organic impurities present in water and it destroyed completely bacteria present in water. But uh, some excess remaining chlorine is there. For example, two grams of chlorine, eight grams of chlorine is sufficient for us. But remaining two grams is there in water. That chlorine is called what here? That remaining chlorine is called residual. Residual chlorine. The remaining, the rem which is remaining in water, extra excess chlorine. We need only eight grams, but we used to ten grams. Following me, students. The excess two grams of chlorine is called residual chlorine. So with that two grams, what we are getting now? Bad taste, odor. Bad taste toxic. we are getting. Bad odor we are getting, and it is also toxic to human beings. So exact amount of chlorine we have to use, ma, remember. So the amount of chlorine required to kill the bacteria and to remove organic matter is called breakpoint chlorination. So how to know how much exact amount of chlorine we need, how to know means we go for, uh, by we can know by breakpoint chlorination, by this graph, breakpoint chlorination. So that we have to discuss now, okay now. The amount of chlorine, exact amount of chlorine required to kill the bacteria and also to remove the organic matter, impurities present in water. So that is called breakpoint chlorination. So by breakpoint chlorination, we can know, we can know 
how much exactly, how much amount of chlorine we can add in water. We can add in water. So the water sample, the water sample is treated with chlorine, is treated with chlorine and estimated for residual chlorine. This is like experiment only. Understood, ma? The water sample is treated with chlorine and estimated for residual chlorine in water, estimated for residual chlorine in water and plotted a graph. So we'll take the graph. After estimating the chlorine, we will take a graph, plotted a graph, which gives break point chlorination. So break point chlorination means, that is how much we can use exact amount of chlorine to kill the bacteria and to remove the impurities present in the water. So the water sample is treated with chlorine, okay? And estimated for residual chlorine in water, estimated for residual chlorine in water and plotted a graph, which gives the break point chlorination, which gives the break point chlorination. So uh, this we will discuss in the next class now because I have to tell you about uh, uh, how we are adding chlorine in water in sample of water. Uh, uh, we will we will add slowly one gram, two gram, three gram, four gram. Then we will estimate the chlorine. Understood, ma? Following me, students. Okay, na? This we will discuss in the next class. Breakpoint chlorination important. Hello. Okay, okay ma'am. Ma this is okay, very very important. Breakpoint chlorination. You have to listen, yes, ma'am. Ma okay, na? Then uh, tomorrow we will discuss about this graph. Okay, so that we can complete this topic. Tomorrow we'll discuss more. Shall I stop the class now? Yes, ma'am. Uh, tomorrow I will repeat this uh, chlorination, ma'am. Okay, then we will continue with breakpoint chlorination. I will tell you what is breakpoint chlorination with graph. Okay, so afterwards we can go for vaginization. So, students, you understood my today's class? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what are the four steps we discussed? Tell me. No need about fifth step. What are the four steps? <laughs> First step is what, ma? Screening. Screening. Second step? Sedimentation. Sedimentation. Third step? Coagulation. Coagulation. Fourth step? Filtration. Filtration. Fifth step? Sterilization. Sterilization or disinfection. Disinfection. Sterilization or disinfection okay that we are discussing okay not yet completed tomorrow tomorrow will complete okay shall i end the class yes okay yes, i'm attending huh? attendance every day i'm giving Hello? attendance i'm giving ma okay ma'am okay no in zoom only i will collect the attendance okay na from the Zoom, okay? okay I will okay, collect that. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Only for attendance. <laughs> Students, only for attendance, you are, are attending the class or are you listening or not? I don't know. Okay, okay. Then, okay, then.